Welcome back to the Collective Shift channel. Today we'll be discussing a recent post by our head of research and content, Matt, on the latest onslaught of regulatory and enforcement action that's hitting the crypto industry. This post was published on the Collective Shift platform for our members and is an example of the type of content we produce to help them save time and make informed decisions. Thanks, Matt, for joining us uh, and take it away with what stood out to you from this post. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Good to be back. And yeah, this this post on a lot of regulatory action, I think just starting off off this week, middle of February, there was, you know, a, a double whammy of our regulatory sort of actions. Um, it really did shake the market. So we had a lot of members getting, you know, questions coming in from all different channels, member support and uh, in our Discord and Facebook group, uh, everyone wants to know, you know, it, how significant is this? Why are prices going down so much? Uh, so yeah, we spent some time with some assistance from yourself as well uh, on this post, and we were we were able to you know help them help members make sense of what went on. So in this case, it was a you know a development or, or a settlement from the SEC, the securities regulator over in the states. Uh, they they settled with Kraken, one of the oldest and uh, quite a large. US based crypto exchange. They were essentially, you know, got approached by the SEC, which really, you know, took took aim at them for offering what they claimed were unregistered securities. Uh, which is, you know, uh, that's illegal. Um, so that was in relation to their staking program where, you know, me or you just holding holding tokens or cryptocurrencies, we can go to Kraken you know, deposit our tokens and say to Kraken, hey, you can have these. We just want to earn some rewards on them. And, you know, Kraken was advertising like, you know, you can earn rewards for this. Uh, it was essentially a staking program. There's some that are offered by other exchanges, but Kraken's in particular caught the raise the alarm of the SEC. Um, and now we've got a scenario after this settlement where Kraken was fined $30 million dollars and also they had to, I guess, cancel or, you know, stop their staking program in the US. So Kraken Australia and other international, other countries where Kraken is set up, they can still offer their staking program. But just in the US, uh, it was, it was not allowed to be offered. And that really did spook the markets, uh, after that. So we, we talked a bit about in this post sort of, you know, is this going to continue? Um, you know, what's the likelihood that even the likes of Coinbase might get in, in trouble here? So that's sort of the, the direction this, this, uh, post went down. Yeah. It's an interesting area, especially to see how the response is going to be from Coinbase. I did see Brian Armstrong, the CEO did say on Twitter that he was going to definitely fight any SEC action against their staking program. So I think it's a wait and see to with uh, how hard uh, regulators are going to come down on who in this industry. Uh, I know there was some more knock-on effects uh, a couple of days after this with Paxos and its Binance stablecoin. Uh, can you shed some light on what happened there? I know a lot of withdrawals happened and even slight DPEG of the Binance stablecoin. Yeah, so uh, Binance, a major exchange, they, they offer a stablecoin pegged to the US dollar. Uh, they do that via um, a stablecoin issuer. So this company is called Paxos, been around since I think 2011 or 2012. Um, and it's essentially a white glove service or white label service. Um, and yeah, in this case, the New York um, Department of Financial Services uh, ordered Paxos to stop uh, offering, uh, stop minting or stop creating these new BUSD stablecoins for Binance. Uh, so that was very, very notable there. I think Binance, as we've talked about with members a lot last year, is kind of one that's, you know, in a bit of a cloudy area from a jurisdiction standpoint, or even a, a legal standpoint. So, you know, it was a really, I think, a bit of a nudge from the New York regulator to tell Paxos more or less strongly signal them to cut off ties uh, with this murky sort of exchange. So Paxos has done done that uh there was a lot of there were a lot of members um you know a bit anxious understandably at the time you know if they were holding busd which is you know quite a large stable coin i think it's maybe third behind usdc and and usdt and you know it, there were a bit uh of anxiety around you know is does that mean busd is going to zero uh, thankfully that is not the case. Uh, so, you know, BUSD holders, uh, have about 12 months at least to convert their stable coins either into another stable coin, such as USDC or USDT, 
or they can simply on Binance just cash it out for other Australian dollars or, or US dollars. Uh, so again, the markets were kind of a bit shaken on, on the back of this news, not as much as uh, the Kraken news, but again, as we've, we've been talking about like all last year, Nick in particular, I know you've been really like really strong on this and it's starting to essentially, you know, you're, you're essentially starting to be vindicated because the last the last six weeks, um, I know you've been flagging sort of regulatory uh, challenges on the horizon for crypto, like all the past 12 months. And, you know, these past six weeks, we've seen uh, a lot of sort of developments, as we can see on on screen here for those watching on YouTube. For those listening on the podcast, we are kind of just showing, honestly, there must be about eight dot points there of, of separate agencies in the US um, that have sort of targeted, um, you know, these entities, crypto companies that are based in the US. Um, they've more or less, you know, strongly signaled that a crackdown, they either are actively cracking down on the industry or they're signaling you know, more pain ahead. Um, so banking access is a big one. So, you know, cryptocurrencies have always had issues getting a bank account. Um, and that, that's becoming even more challenging in the US, particularly in these last six weeks. So yeah, you've been, you've been right, Nick. Uh, definitely. Um, I think regulation is coming to the forefront, um, very rapidly. And I think in 2023, uh, we're going to see a lot more of these sort of, you know, enforcement actions, things that sort of spook the markets. And, you know, that's where we at Collective Shift kind of put the tools down. And, mm -hmm. and when we can't go, we kind of drop everything and go all in whenever this news happens. And we, we try to, you know, make sense of it and pass that on to members uh, to help them again, make, save time and, and make, make uh, more informed decisions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's pretty scary out there at the moment. I know just reading between the lines in certain White House briefings they put out, uh, they're very vocal in their language in terms of more regulation coming for the industry and tightening up, I think, this relationship between crypto and the traditional financial sector, which they've been very vocal on not wanting to get any closer and trying to strangle that, really. So maybe we could finish off with any other similar cases that may be bought against US stablecoin issuers and exchanges. I know that's probably the number one question from members and from the general public. Uh, what now for, I guess, exchanges? Who's in the firing line? And do we think uh, that you know they will face a similar brunt? I know my just initial thought there is uh, this might just be a Binance targeted issue, uh, considering they have been strongly investigated uh, for years now over anti-money laundering laws um, and not obeying certain compliance. Yeah, Nick, I tend to agree. I think if the regulators or the US government or agencies really wanted to shake the market, they would have gone after a bigger fish uh, in the stablecoin space. So those being definitely Circle, which is, you know, behind USDC, or they would have gone after, um, it's not really US, US based, but there has been rumors for years now that whether um, the government will come after Tether or the, the companies behind, behind Tether, uh, Tether. So that's not what they did. Instead, they went up to, yeah, as you said, a company that was just servicing Binance, um, and kind of spooked them into, you know, cutting those ties. Um, so for me, short term, I don't expect, uh, there to be any enforcement action, uh, coming after the likes of Circle or, or even the entities behind Tether, which is, uh, promising because, you know, the stable coins are such, they're the lifeblood of the crypto industry and they're extremely important, uh, particularly at a time when, you know, the banking relationships with the crypto industry is kind of significantly hampered. Um, you kind of need stable coins to kind of at least you know, keep the, keep the system flowing or at least a lot of financial or DeFi sort of ecosystems rely on stable coins. Um, ideally the more decentralized ones, but that's not the case for now. Um, so again, if we saw enforcement action after the likes of Circle or, um, or Tether, that would, that would definitely for me justify, um, prices going down. Like that would cause quite a, quite a market sell off. Um, so yeah. And then in relation to Kraken, just quickly, you know, we've been getting a lot of questions from members about, Hey, is there going to be other exchanges where, um, you know, the SEC comes after their, their staking programs? Um, obviously we're not legal professionals and none of what we say is, is legal advice, of course. But, um, from all of what I've understood, 
about this. Krakens was one of the older sort of staking programs and is kind of, yes, it's like an on-chain program, but it, um, to my understanding, it is quite a different structure uh, compared to, you know, the likes of Coinbase. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff tends to come down to how you market it as well uh, to the public. And I think, again, I think the SEC really didn't like the fact that Kraken were, you know, advertising such a high interest rate um, as well for, for the public. So I think the worst of it's over just in terms of the staking, you know, categorization or whether staking is a security. Um, I think that part of it's over, over. but to your point earlier, uh, I do think there's quite a lot of sort of regulatory, uh, well, headwinds will continue for the industry this year, uh, particularly, you know, led by the White House with their sort of recommendations, you know, slated to come out in the coming months for, for DeFi, decentralized finance, and then the non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Uh, they will each have a report coming out in the coming months. And that's separate from even just the overall recommendations of how to sort of mitigate risk with respect to this crypto asset class and what that means for banking relationships, which I still maintain is the most important thing and it's the most vulnerable thing for the crypto industry. If you're gonna target it, if you're a regulator, you're gonna go after their on-ramps and off-ramps and it's dwindling pretty fast over in the States. So that's where my concern would be in terms of the regulatory space for this year. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one out there and I'm no doubt, I think we'll be back on the podcast talking about any more developments that do happen. And I'm with you there, Matt, that I think how the next actions happen with the SEC White House will be a really significant uh, signal in how hard they're going to come for the market. So thanks for joining me. Uh, If you want to catch this post, head to the uh, collectiveshift.io website uh, because we routinely post uh, member content like this so we can help our valuable members save time and make informed decisions. So again, if you're wanting to level up your crypto game, book in a free strategy call over at the Collective Shift website. That's collectiveshift.io. Thanks, Matt.